It's funny how we'll drop $5,000 on a camera without realizing the real magic happens in post-production. The difference came from layering proper color techniques, not the gear. What most creators miss is that cinematic quality gets built layer by layer, like painting on a canvas. Today, I'm breaking down the exact workflow that transforms flat footage into something that looks expensive, starting with your foundation and adding each element deliberately. The best part, these techniques work whether you're shooting on an Ari or an iPhone. Let's look at the Color Slice tool in DaVinci Resolve. What Color Slice does is break down the full color spectrum into six primary secondary color slices. Each slice represents a segment of the color wheel, reds, magentas, blues, cyans, greens, and yellows. The three sliders for each slice control hue, shift, saturation, and luminance, letting you make precise adjustments. For example, compare a film scene where skin tones appear overly orange against a cinematic portrait with natural tones. Open your image and vector scope to identify problem colors, then select the corresponding slice. For skin tones, work with the red-yellow slices, reduce saturation slightly, and shift hue toward more natural tones. This foundational tool gives you surgical color control without complex power windows. By adjusting a color slice, you affect every instance of that range throughout the image. Perfect for fixing contamination or creating stylistic shifts. Practice by analyzing film frames, notice how consistent color relationships create cohesion. That's what Color Slice helps you achieve. Remember, subtle adjustments work best to maintain that cinematic look. The Color Warper in DaVinci Resolve 20 builds on Color Slice adjustments for more refined hue control. Open it from the Color tab to see a 6x6 grid mapping the spectrum. Click any image area to select that color range. Dragging shifts the hue while preserving luminance and saturation like adjusting spices in a recipe, where small changes affect the whole dish. For precision, increase the grid to 12 plus 12 or 32 or 32. Higher dimensions isolate narrow color bands, perfect for adjusting skin tones without affecting nearby reds. The spiderweb view displays all adjustments simultaneously, helping balance multiple shifts. Version 20 introduces the Chroma Color Warper for advanced work. This separates hue and saturation adjustments completely, preventing color bleeding. Activate it with the Chroma button to shift blues toward teal while maintaining clean saturation levels. Use this for corrections or creative grading. Sample problem colors and nudge them toward targets or systematically shift multiple hues toward a color scheme. Since changes affect all matching colors in your image, subtle adjustments create the most natural results. The tool's power lies in its precision. Small moves yield balanced transformations across your entire color spectrum. The offset tool in DaVinci Resolve impacts your entire image's color balance at once. Unlike primary wheels that adjust shadows, mids, and highlights separately, offset moves all tonal ranges uniformly relative to the vector scope. To use it, open your color wheels panel and locate the offset wheel. Click and drag the control point to shift colors globally. Watch your vector scope as you adjust. You'll see the entire color field shifting position while maintaining its shape. Think of offset like adjusting the overall lighting in a photograph. It shifts all colors cohesively while preserving their relationships. For corrections or creative looks, nudge the control point toward desired tones on your vector scope. Move toward the skin tone line for natural fixes or toward orange red for warmth and teal for cooler styles. The effect is subtle but impactful across the entire image. Um, since offset adjustments multiply with existing nodes, apply it toward the end of your grade to unify previous corrections. Directions. Keep adjustments minimal, under 5% deviation, as small moves create noticeable shifts. Um, this final touch brings cohesion to your entire node tree. Uh, digital footage often has shadows that appear too dense and black, creating an unnatural video look. Here's how to add milky grey shadows, like a soft filmic veil for organic depth. Open DaVinci Resolve's custom curves tool and switch to LUM versus LUM to adjust luminance without color shifts. Place an anchor at 30% to protect mid-tones, then gently lift the bottom left point to create a J-curve. Watch your scopes. Aim for 5-10% black levels instead of 0%. The curve should maintain shadow texture with a gradual transition, avoiding harsh posterization while adding subtle density. This mimics film stock's natural behavior, where chemical emulsions never reach pure black. The milky quality preserves detail in darker areas. Film grain inhalation add the final organic texture that makes digital footage feel like real film. Start with Resolve's effects panel and search for film grain. Pick a 35mm preset matching your resolution, then adjust size between 0.4 and 1.2. Smaller values work best for digital sensors emulating fine grain stocks. Keep intensity subtle. Heavy grain distracts rather than enhances. For halation, use glow effects or plugins like Dehancer. Set threshold to target only the brightest highlights 80-90% on your waveform, with radius between 1.5% and 3% of frame width. Keep strength under 15%. The effect should gently bloom highlights, like light scattering through film emulsion, not create obvious glows. Apply these in your final nodes after color grading. Use grain at 70-80% opacity for realism, creating that tactile texture of old film print. To create depth in your scene, 
screen, apply the depth map effect in DaVinci Resolve, and open the OpenFX panel and search for depth map. This tool separates foreground from background based on depth. Adjust the focus range to isolate your subject, then fine tune the depth blur to control sharpness. For example, imagine a close up interview shot where the background competes for attention. Before the depth map, everything appears equally sharp. After applying it, the subject pops forward while the background softens naturally, creating immediate focus. Next, invert a mask on the background and slightly lower mid-tone detail for subtle separation. Adjust contrast by 10-15% between subject and background, enough to enhance depth without looking artificial. Uh, check your waveform to keep adjustments realistic. Pair this with slight color shifts. Warm the subject while cooling the background, keeping saturation differences under 5%. The depth map complements qualifiers for tricky elements like hair or glass. Always preview at full resolution to avoid edge artifacts. For moving shots, animate the focus distance to maintain depth relationships. The goal is invisible enhancement. Viewers should feel the depth, not see the technique. Proper foreground-background separation.